me so fast And I don't wanna take a trail in the world But I go, yeah Yeah, I'm gonna love you I'll give you all of what I've got Fancy fines, baby, I have not It's gonna love you Good morning and welcome to another episode. This is something that you have all been asking for for a long time since you knew we were sailing a 1260 this season. And so this is a full and very in-depth tour of the Seawind 1260. Now a couple of points before we start. Number one, we have been living on this boat for a while now. So we are pretty familiar with the systems that we weren't so familiar with when we did the initial review of this boat about 18 months ago. Point two, as I've just alluded to, we've already reviewed this boat dockside. So this is more kind of like what we found from, liver, from being liverboards, really. Um, point three, when we did the initial 19 reviews, they were just part of our search for our new boat. As most of you will know, we are now in partnership with Seawind. So while this is objective and Seawind have absolutely no constraints over what we say, a lot of you could argue, well, hang on a minute, you're not going to say anything negative because of your partnership. And that's a very fair point. We have a few minor niggles about this boat that we kind of think that we should address. And also a few points that I think that by addressing these issues, we'll be able to take forth into Ruby Rose 2, the Seawind 1370. But yes, there is a there is a point to make that we are in partnership with Seawind. But this is our full review of the Seawind 1260. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> So this is the saloon of the Seawind 1260. Now, for those of you who know Seawinds, they have this huge trifold door. So essentially it's three doors that open up into a very big space. Now the Seawind 1260 is under 42 foot. So what they have done in this is to create a big indoor outdoor area, which essentially extends the cockpit into the saloon and, and vice versa. So that coupled with the galley down means that you do have a lot of usable space, probably more than any other 40 foot catamaran we've found so far. So the saloon in here, let me walk you around this and show you all the points that we have noted that are useful to us, things that we found that we've used, things that we found that we're like, oh, we're not gonna really use that much. So let's first start with this huge U-shaped seating area. Now you could probably get, I don't know, eight to 10 people here. The seating is partially modular. So what you have is these small footstools that move around. So you can have them turned into a day bed, turned into a chaise long, or you can move them around to kind of provide additional seating for guests at the dining table. So again, it's a pretty huge area. One thing I do want to know is this table. Now you're thinking, oh Nick, it's just a table, but it's clever because uh, it works in different ways. and. The simplicity of it is that firstly, it lowers and raises to form a day bed and there are cushions that you can put in place here to make a full day bed. The second thing is that the pedestal is offset from the center of the table, which essentially means that as you swivel it, it gains different functionality. So at the moment you've got this table, which is essentially a dining table. If you spin it this way, because the pedestal is offset, it gives you this area to play with, but also a kind of smaller table over there for, for working on and then spinning it around again puts it either an area for where you can grab food from outside. I think it's even called this buffet mode. Um, we've actually found it pretty useful even just for getting around the table a little bit more and then you know spin it around again and you've offset it this way. So you it, it is pretty useful. It's just a it's just a clever bit of design. So this, the table we're really happy with. I think as an area, it does have a lot of multi, multi-functionality and, and we've used it a lot. I think from us, now that we've been on this boat for so long, we tend to at night, especially when it gets a bit cooler, we put the trifold door down and we tend to sit in here and it, it's quite warm. Now, I'm gonna talk a lot about the upstairs, downstairs galley, the galley up, galley down situation. It's, you know, it's a hugely controversial and emotive topic for a lot of people. We will give you our thoughts um, and let you decide, but keep watching and we'll show you the galley. 
So I'm now on the port side of the, the saloon. We've got a chart table here now. I, you, you know I'm no fan of chart tables that, are, that aren't forward facing. This is, it's small, you can't get a full size chart on it. We have full size charts and so we use the, we use the saloon table. But yeah, it's, it's small, it's practical. There are, over there, there are the battery isolators um, and under these benches, there are the batteries. There's a lot of trip switches. So there's a lot of maintenance gear on the port side. The starboard side gives you storage space. So again, the, 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 the usable space is well, you know, it's well thought out. Um, for the chart table, I'd like to see it a little bit more, at least 45 degrees, so that you could at least spin around and have it forward facing. But they're doing that with the 1370 and they do it with the 1600. So again, that's not a, pro that's not a problem for us. Again, this is a really, really good use of small space. So um, could it be better? To my mind, yes. But again, uh, it's the best I think that you can do with such a small area. On this side, what we've got is an area which again, to it stops you from requiring two chart plotters. The chart plotter is here and again visible through the helm. Because it's on a, on a, on a pedestal that moves, you can actually just spin this around and lock it. And so if you are trying to navigate from the, from the inside chart table, you can see you can navigate pretty effectively. Again, I think because this boat, the price point for this boat is pretty low, compared to other comparable 40 42 foot boats i think you know if you if you can get away with just using one chart plotter it cuts you know a little bit of the budget down so again just a, a swiveling chart plotter is pretty useful again behind this chart plotter once it's locked in place you've got vhf radio on this boat and the uh, fusion stereo system which on this boat is linked to a multi-speaker system and a subwoofer sounds pretty good the acoustics within a, a, a you know a fiberglass space aren't going to be the same as a church but you know we found that you know we can blast out the music when we are remote and no one is being disturbed below this area there is the television um again i think this is a 32 inch there are options on the 1370 for a 42 inch Again, it's pretty practical and we found that as we sit around the saloon, there are very few spaces or places where both people can't see the TV. My only concern is that just because of its position, you could knock it if you had something sharp in your pockets and actually damage the screen. Whether that happens in real life, I, I couldn't tell you. I think, you know, what I would say is that when we had a pretty large chart plotter on Ruby Rose, which was actually mounted um, in the cop on the cockpit table, and everyone not going on board that knew anything about sailing was said, oh, you're going to break that. Um, we never did. We had it for nine years. But um, but I, I guess there is a slight vulnerability to, to this uh, television because this, this, this area can be quite small when you've got the mo modular seating in place. Another thing that people have asked about is these toughened glass windows and do they impinge on your visibility? Um, now, what we have found, um, the answer is no. I will talk to you about this again for when I talk about helm position. The windows, just from this point of view, they go up and down um, electrically. We haven't, obviously, at the time that we've had this boat, found any problems with the windows. One criticism that is raised against them is that people say, oh, what if they break, what if they break? Well, look, my, you know, I've owned cars sometimes for 10 years with electric windows. My dad's had a car for 30 years with electric windows and they've never broken. And they are hidden away from, you know, marine environments. So I have no question really that, uh, that the windows would break um, or the, the window motors would break. But we have always sailed with these windows down. Really, from our point of view, they, are, they just provide security when we're out. The other thing is, you know, looking from this helm position, and again, we'll get a full view of this helm position as we kind of move around the boat. You can look straight out from, from here, and if you are anchoring or docking, um, you can open the windows fully, so you can actually have, there's no glass, there's no reflection, there's no refraction um, off those windows. So you do get full line of sight. And the pillars that are in place here, this pillar here, and then the pillars around the windows, by kind of moving your head you know, a couple of degrees or taking a foot sideways, you do have as good a visibility as any other catamaran um, that we've been on. Obviously, if you have a catamaran that has these, you know, the aft helm stations, you know, you get more visibility down the side decks, but you then lose the opposing four quarters visibility. The other thing we have found from sitting on the helm is that you can, and we did this yesterday, and I'll explain why we had to do it yesterday, um, you can just stick your head out 
and look down the side decks. You know, it, just because you've got a helm position here, it doesn't preclude you from looking down the side decks. The reason we had to do that yesterday is because we had a huge amount of rain. We are, we're in the Whit Sundays, which is tropical north uh, eastern Queensland, and there has been some horrendous weather coming through. And what we have found is that we have these uh, the screens, these kind of like the, 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 the sunshade screens on the on the windows and unfortunately when you get a wave across the deck you almost lose your visibility because the the the, the, sea, the sea water actually gets into the, the the kind of like into the netting and it's not good so we will take those off for future sailing it was just something we you know came across um accidentally um vhf you can use it from inside and outside and again that reduces the need for a second vhf so that's pretty good overall let me just talk about the positives a bit more I really do like this trifold door I know see wind bang on about this all the time I do think it's a pretty clever use of space and if you um, we have an, an interview with Richard Ward coming out over the coming months um, discussing um, how they managed to get such a large opening door because I think from the point of view of the actual physics and the and the material science you've got to you've, you've got to kind of like you know it's not like a, a house where you can put a, an RSJ a, you know a big steel girder across to, to open up a big door so there's a, some clever science behind that and you know there are a lot of sea winds what I would say to you is being in Australia being around the Whit Sundays and prior to that in New South Wales around Sydney probably every other Catamaran is a sea wind. They're, they're, they're everywhere. You very rarely see them outside of outside of Australia, but when you're here, they're all here. And so there are a lot of them, you know, I would certainly say hundreds that all have this trifold door. And again, there is they don't have issues with them. What I would say as a negative is that I don't think that this boat is as homely as other catamarans i'm just gonna let me just throw some examples out there you know um fontaine pajot for instance fontaine pajot make very very pretty boats other companies you know uchimere make pretty boats i think that the, the 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 problem with this boat is that in the way that they build it they they mold the furniture that they make the furniture molds in in the hull so that the furniture molds are actually grp and that can look pretty stark the reason for that is to stop creaking. And all I would say is that we've taken this boat out in some horrendous conditions and it does not creak. You know, we have been on these, these, these boats now for months. They, there are no creaks. But the problem with that is that it does cause the overall look to be stark. Now you can modify that, you know, with, you know, scatter cushions and, and changing up a little bit. And all I would say is if you look at the Seawind 1600, which is a different boat, they kind of, they have used different techniques to kind of make it look less white. And the 1370 should be like that as well, but this I find a little bit stark. It's a little bit utilitarian for me as a liverboard. I think, you know, having this, um, if we lived on board, um, we would kind of like spruce it up a little bit and make it look more homely. But that, that is one minor kind of like gripe I have, I have with it. In addition to that, um, light switches down here, there are these little push button light switches which are essentially fail safe. And again, you've got mood lighting. So you've got um, lighting under, under the chart table, under the sofas that's in different colors. If you kind of want to, you know, have a romantic <laughs> evening. There are the uh, halogen lights in the ceiling, which again, light the place up really well the new seawinds are coming through with warm white i don't like cool white just as a just as a temperature i kind of want to make it a little bit more homely and they are also now dimmable these ones aren't dimmable i would have dimmable lights um and then i just want to talk to you about the the, the starboard side of the saloon so on the starboard side again we have this the, you know the large table which kind of sits in the middle the reason i want to bring you to this side is that again there is an issue that people ask us about about how much communication you have with the galley and the saloon if you have a galley down area now because the way that these kind of like these kind of half bulkheads are in place you can look down and communicate pretty effectively with anyone that is in the galley is it as open as having galley up and could you do you have that same line of sight that same kind of like feel of kind of like interaction with whoever is in the galley no of course you don't however two points to probably have a think about number one this is a pretty clever use of space it's a 42 foot boat and they have tried to kind of get the most out of the space that they can there are a lot of other smaller catamarans that 
while we love them, we don't think that the use of space was as good as it could be. If you look back to our review of the Maverick 440, for instance, while that is an absolutely fantastic boat, I personally didn't like the way that the daybed um, kind of like used its space. Again, it's personal preference. The boat was super well built. But again, this ability to look down to the galley does give you some line of communication, but it's, it's not quite as open as you would get if you were um, if you had a galley up. What I would say is that, again, in the few months that we've used this boat, we've been in just about most weather conditions. So um, we've gone from, say, mid, mid teens in, the, in Celsius um, up to the 30s. We probably cook 95% of all our meals outside. The barbecue is pretty effective at every level. And so every night we cook on the barbecue and we just make a salad downstairs. So, you know, the amount of time we spend in that galley is actually not that not that great. So the, the barbecue and the sink kind of offset some of the need to be in the galley. I think another thing that I would say is that, you know, the corridors in this boat, the, you know, the, the, the between the hulls are pretty narrow and to squeeze a galley into there is pretty clever. <clears throat> and it also removes the galley from being up here. So you kind of gain this extra space. And I think one thing I would like you to do is if you look at the space that we've got here and then look at the space that's in that galley, if you try to shoehorn that galley into this space, you'd halve it. So again, I think that from our point of view, while yes, in invariably you do get a better sense of kind of like community and kind of like interaction with a galley up, there is no way you could get that much practical space into the galley um, up here and not completely carve up what you had to socialize. Again, I'll talk more about the galley when we get down there, um, but from our point of view, it's a clever use of space. So just walking out of the trifold door, you find ourselves in the cockpit. Now it's again, it's a pretty large area. And again, the multifunctionality of the seating means that you can basically do anything with it, whether you've got two on board and you want the space or whether you've got eight on board and you want to have a party, there are different things you can do. I think one thing that you should know is that if you look at both helm seats, they are they have the, the backrest that goes forward and back. Now, we've seen that in a few catamarans. One, the older Leopards had that, and we always thought it was really clever and intelligent design. I was unsure about these when I first got on board, and when they were designing the helm seat for the 1370, I'm like, I'm not sure I'm going to be comfortable with that. Again, we've now you know, probably done five, 600 nautical miles with this with these helm seats they are very comfortable and i don't have any issue with them another thing that we do mention in our reviews in our review series is about footrests and how helm seats adjust to people of different height i'm five foot nine Teresa is five foot one five foot two if you listen to her um it works well we both are able to use a seat so pretty comfortable pretty functional and when we're at anchor we tend to have the the helm seats facing backwards um, and when we're obviously sailing, we have them facing forward. So that's pretty clever. Um, looking at this area, the sofa area, again, L-shaped. Now, one thing that you should be aware of is that c 1260 comes with modular, they're actually, they're cool boxes. They're kind of like, that have cushions on. So, but you can pull those out to make kind of modular seating. So you pull those out, you've got seating for, I think you probably get, it says eight, but you could probably get six pretty comfortably around there. Again, it's all, it's all thought out very well. There are options with the flooring here to have now um, vinyl matting or flexi teak. Again, it is quite stark here. So if you are looking for something that's really homely, um, you, you, you can work pretty effectively to, 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 to make it more homely if it's something that you want as a liverboard. But again, um, in its present incarnation, the way it's delivered from the factory, it does that there's a lot of white here up here trifold door now we've talked a lot about this trifold door toughened glass up there it cut, swings down in about 15 seconds on a winch so electric winch is probably a must for this boat but if you the, the you can get the door up and down in about 15 seconds um, and you can have it as a single door as two doors closed as all three doors closed if it's you know if it's cold if it's raining or you just want to close the doors 
And again, there are safety, there's a safety bar up here that locks it all in place. So when the trifold door is up, even if the, the line gets damaged or cut or breaks, why would it? Um, the door is locked in place. So again, from that point of view, it's it's pretty clever. And it's, it's probably one of the design features that I love most about these boats. In addition to that, we've got storage underneath um, the chairs. A, there is a sink with a tap over there, the barbecue over there that as I said, we cook on most nights. Another thing that I think is pretty important to note about Sea Winds is that these handrails, again, it's pretty important to have good handrails. And you know, yes, I have been swinging off them like a monkey for um, many months. They don't move at all, but it's important from the point of view of number one, moving around the boat in a seaway, but also tethering points. You know, you do have to consider what you're doing on night sails, um, open ocean. And so having tethering points here, you know, with a, th with a three meter tether, you know, you can essentially move uh, all around the cockpit. And that's pretty useful. Um, other things to note, there is a davit system that obviously lowers the dinghy and you know the, these handrails form a pretty good way of just you know taking your, your, your davit lines and storing them securely one other thing that you should note is in the in the kind of like in the hard top roof of the 1260 there are two toughened glass curved windows pretty beautiful bits of design but they allow um they do allow you to look at the sails although you do have to move your head around a little bit to to kind of get that so Overall, I really love the, I do really love this 1260. There are some modifications that I would make if it were my boat. And I think that what I would do, and this is just personal preference, I would kind of sex it up a little bit and take certain aspects of other boat, of other sea winds, for instance, to make, um, to just to make it like a different boat. For instance, I don't really, I don't really like the cockpit table. The 1370 table and the 1600 table are pretty lovely and they have these kind of like lovely little gate folds that come out. I would prefer that. Everything else I absolutely love. And you know, it is, and I'm gonna keep banging on about this. I think the thing that I like most about this boat is, is, is a very clever use of space. It doesn't feel like a 40, 41, 42 foot boat. So yeah, we're pretty happy with this. So helm position is on port. There's obviously twin helms, but the port the port side has the engine controls. There is an option to have engine controls on, on both sides. And with Ruby Rose 2, we're going for the electronic controls, which kind of like stops you needing a lever to switch between the two. So helm position, as I said, it's, it is really comfortable. It's high enough for Therese to sit here and navigate without any kind of like restriction to her visibility. Um, there were some questions on some of our previous videos on the, this is the second 1260 we've been on, it's not the first, so we've got a pretty good compare and contrast between two 1260s that are set up differently about a squeak in the wheel. Um, there is no squeak in this wheel, I think there was a squeak in the other wheel. Um, engine controls, pretty easy to read. Um, you have your BNG um, plotter in front of you, which again you can angle, plus the full instruments, autopilot control, windless control, which is surprisingly easy to use. And we've got the clears up because it's been raining. Um, a couple of points that I think I would make about this situation that I would kind of want to change a little bit. I struggle a little bit. There are some really nice bins to put your lines, but the bins are not quite large enough to get all your lines if you have the main sail up. There is a lot of main halyards. So again, we you have to kind of put the main halyard somewhere else. It won't kind of fit in all these. And then, you know, in here, what we've got, we've got um, main halyard, main sheet. We've got two reefing lines. We've got the, the, the line for the uh, door. We've got the line for the the uh, the, the jib, um, and so you know it's pretty full as it is without the main halyard. So I would want to see these a little bit bigger or deeper. Um, aside from that, there's not else. There's nothing else I would change. It is as I said, it's a pretty comfortable helm position. I think, as I alluded to, you know, from the point of view of my visibility, I can look straight ahead. At the moment, I've got the pillar straight in front of my line of sight, but I've moved my head, what, I don't know, five, 10 centimeters, and my visibility's back. So there is a blind spot there, but it's not a great one. And yesterday, because of the weather, and because we, you know, foolishly left the, um, 
the, the shade screens on, looking down the light, down here, you know, just sticking your head out, is no different to being on a, on a Catalan that has um, aft, aft helms where you can look down the side deck. This all, it also means that you can sail pretty effectively from um, either port or starboard because you're twin helmed. Most of the lines um, run aft, so again, sail control is pretty easy. We're pretty comfortable with this. I just, again, there's nothing that you can't achieve um, with sail trim, under sail, or motoring by just moving yourself around the helm seat. At no point do I have to leave the helm seat to say, you know, think I can't see that effectively. As I said, there's these shaped glass windows. So from here, I can see the exact set of my sail. Um, although what I would say is that, you know, um, I can't see the leech. So I can see the luff, but I can't see the leech. So again, from that point of view, you have to stick your head out that way. Um, but again, for seeing, looking at your foresail leech or the luff of your mainsail, it's pretty effective. So again, from the helm, um, a few minor, very minor niggles, but overall, I, I, have, I have no, no real complaint with it. So I really hope you enjoy part one of that review because this review is so extensive. We have split it into two. In part two, we are gonna be discussing the whole galley up versus galley down, what we think of it, what we think of the use of space for the galley down in the Seawind 1260. We'll also be discussing the cabins, the beds, the berths. Are they big enough for a family to live on board? The storage, the storage regarding volume, the storage regarding weight and the deck areas. So hope you enjoy that. Give us a like, give us a subscribe and you won't miss that episode so enjoy